Hello, genealogists. This is Craig. And today we're going to talk about genealogy of standards again. We'll actually be talking about genealogy standards for a long time. One by one, maybe two by three. It depends. Uh, the usual caveat, I don't represent the board for certification of genealogists. What we're dealing with is my opinion, and it's worth a grain of salt. You can take it for what it's worth. So today we're going to talk about standard 13, source-based content. Research plans list all types of sources likely to provide or lead to evidence that helps meet a plan's objectives. Plans may list databases, finding aids, indexes, search engines, and other mechanisms for accessing sources. Research plans may also include authored narratives, derivative records, and documented and undocumented genealogies. Wherever possible, however, research plans follow such materials to original records and primary information. See glossary for definitions of authored narrative, derivative record, document as a verb, evidence, information, original record, primary information, record as a noun, and source. So source-based content, number 13. Basically, what it says is your research plan will contain everything, but recognize that the focus of your research plan has to be getting to that original record. You might stop too soon. You may deal with just a documented genealogy. Sometimes the most important parts of anything written is the footnotes. For example, I use Wikipedia all the time. Do I use Wikipedia for its content alone? No. For me, the most important thing is what the references are. So I always attempt to research the references that lead to something in Wikipedia. Do I trust Wikipedia? No. Do I trust family search? No. But do I trust the references? Sometimes. Not all the time. Depends on what the reference is. Have to look at the merit of the reference. And this is what you're going to have to do here. Your research plan needs to have an end result that allows you to deal with as many original records as possible. Now, can, will you always be able to find original records? No. But should you make the attempt? Yes. Let me give you a good example. Revolutionary War, compiled military service record, found on fold three. You can find one in four seconds, if you know what you're doing. Uh, a minute if you don't. I mean, that's how easy it is. So you're going to download the compiled military service record. And most of you are going to end your research right then and there. And in fact, all of our lives, that's where we've ended our military research, was either in a compiled military service record or a pension. But... Also on full three are Revolutionary War roles. These are the original records that create help to lead to the abstract cards that are found in the compiled military service record. So you would want to find each and every one of the original muster rolls or payrolls that resulted in those abstract cards found in that compiled military service record. That's the difference. Now, does it mean that you have to go and find the original piece of paper? No. The compiled military service records and the Revolutionary War roles that are on Fold 3 are copies of microfilm, which microfilmed the original records. So that counts. Although I much prefer my microfilming done in color than in black and white. And we'll talk about that at some point in the future. Basically, source-based content. Number 13 means you're going to have a lot of stuff on your research plan, but recognize that the goal of your research plan is to not only answer the question that you have, but to get to as many original records as possible in the process of doing that. So this has been Craig. This has been Just Genealogy. And we'll see you later. And before I forget, remember that we're dealing with the book Genealogy Standards, second edition revised. And if you don't own a copy, you should.